My name is Julian Perleko, and welcome to the Road to 2000. Um, I played in a Grandmaster Norm tournament recently, and the tournament um, overall went pretty well. I scored minus one, or four out of nine. Uh, gained some FIDE, so we are very close to achieving a new title. But instead of looking at my good, good games or good moves, I am picking out all the mistakes that I made through the tournament, and we're going to go through them as exercises. So in this first position, I have the black pieces against, um, against Robbie Kevishvili. And here I made, uh, I made a mistake. It is black to play. What would you guys like to do with black? And also, what is your evaluation of the position? All right, Rook B8, King G3 was very suspicious, but Ben Simon wanted me to do it. No, hey, you're on my audience, never saw it. <laughs> my evaluation is it's the last lecture's position. That is incorrect. It, well, it was. <laughs> that was the problem. Now we're over. Oh, OK. We're fine. <laughs> All right, never mind. Uh, when you're right, you're right, Twitch. When you're right, you're right. Yeah, it is black to play. What would you guys like to do with black? Don't all shout out at once. <laughs> okay, somebody in uh, in YouTube chat. I will now differentiate. I can I can tell. I can tell. Um, <laughs> I'll probably call you guys Twitch chat eventually. Um, says I would play Knight takes C six, and then uh, and the reason why I would do this is because it's very safe. Now. Um, well, the good news, I guess, for, for you is um, that's, that's what I played. The bad news is that uh, that move isn't very good. <laughs> so knight takes c6 is safe, and black is not worse. But black is actually much better here. So black has an advantage. Yes? Um, I'm wondering if we could play rook b1. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, exa exactly. Rook b, b1 is a much stronger version of knight takes c6. So in the game, I played the move knight takes c6. And um, here, my opponent played the move uh, rook, take, uh, rook takes c6. And I played queen d8, with the point being that I'm trying to like checkmate him, right? But the issue, oh, sorry, rook b, b1 is just a better version of this, because we are already threatening rook h1, where the knight maybe can come to f5. And if knight takes e7, we have the same sort of thing, but both of my rooks are lined up and I'm threatening checkmate. So this is just a much more aggressive and more accurate way to execute my attack. Um, I was not, uh, I didn't fully appreciate how strong this move would be, but black has close to a winning advantage here. So very good. That was the first mistake that I made in this tournament, uh, the first of 16. <laughs> OK, this is the second mistake I made this tournament, and this is a lot more costly. So. Uh, in this position, what would you guys like to do with black and why? There's one person who's not allowed to answer this question. <laughs> So somebody says, um, if you were playing GM Kevishvili, you would just take a draw. Um, yeah, I agree. But you're actually, I think, um, you're in trouble here. So making a draw is not at all trivial. 
you, you do have a way to make a draw, but I did not find it. Uh, yeah, oh, no, sorry. No. Uh, Gabe's the person who's not allowed to answer because he saw the game live and he knows the computer evaluation. <laughs> but you're allowed to answer. So I would play, if, I, if I'm trying to draw here, I would play um, uh, rook on uh, uh, a to g8. A b to g1. A b to g1. OK. And if white plays king f3. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so the issue is, yeah, like rook bg1, king f3, rook f1, then white has this rook f2 block, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's not you know, totally obvious how we're going to give perpetual, if we're giving perpetual at all. I'm sorry? Rook b1, f1. Rook b1, f1, and if I take your queen, what's your intention? <laughs> it's not, not a... No, not a great intention, but you know you will succeed in your in your goal. <laughs> rook bg1, rook f8 is not it's not good for black. This one is actually very pretty. Study like. <laughs> Somebody put in chat. Anybody want to play chess? Uh, not right now. Maybe later. <laughs> What's crazy is my opponent. So I saw the first move, and I didn't understand something. My opponent saw the first move and understood it. So he like he if, if he had this position with black, he would have drawn. Somebody says queen g1. That move is not legal, but if your opponent lets you do it, good move. <laughs> Highly effective. Sorry, what? D4. D4. OK, and after I take your queen? What's your intention? <laughs> nice. Good job. The position, you are stalemated. So it takes, and you can give away all of your pieces. So I calculated this line, and then I saw rook f2, and I was like, oh, it's not perpetual. But it doesn't matter. We give perpetual this way. And if you ever take, none of my pawns can move. I have no legal moves, and the game is a draw. So that would have been a nice way to draw my first round. I did not find that. I, so. I saw this variation, and I saw rook f1, and after rook f2, I stopped because I was like, oh, I'm down a queen. I don't have perpetual. But I forgot to keep checking the forcing moves, which uh, you know, um, I yell at all my students you know, that they probably should be looking at their forcing moves, and then I, do, I don't do it myself, which is unfortunate. Um, but it happens. Um, OK, so very, very good. All right, so on to the next game. Um, I'm playing Grandmaster Don Basurin Basurin. And uh, in the opening, I think I've surprised him by playing um, the scotch. And he didn't want to go into any like, big theoretical variation, so he played some sideline. And here, I have a decision of like, how to capitalize on my advantage. Um, what would you guys do with white? It seemed this is, I, I didn't know the position, because I'm, I'm not super familiar with, with the scotch. I play this um, sort of as a one-off thing. So what would you do here with white after my opponent has checked me and gone back? It's white to play and gain an advantage. And I think. The way that you arrive at the right answer is thinking, um, what, was, what does my opponent want to do? Queen g4 is a bad move, because after knight f6, queen g7, rook g8, queen h6. OK, I can probably throw in rook g6. Um, well, you're going to put your queen on h3. And I, I mean, I have lots of moves that just really punish you for moving your queen out too early. You are not in a position to be. Uh, bringing your queen out. That was not the time. So 
Somebody gives knight f6, which is illegal and bad. Don't put your pieces on squares that are protected. F4. So um, F4, I think, isn't very strong because after like D6, Knight F6, the center is like a little soft. Later, I will push D5, and it's hard for you to control the square. I'm going to give you guys a, a big hint, which is in every position, black wants to achieve the move D5. If we think about moves that develop the light squared bishop, which I think are the most intuitive, for, for instance, bishop E2, D3, C4, B5, those sorts of squares. The issue with those moves is you're going to have to think about black playing something like knight f6 followed by d5 or d5 directly. Okay, well then bf, uh, um, bc4. Yeah, bishop, bishop c4. Bishop c4, the problem with that move is I will play knight f6 attacking your center, and if you defend your center, I will castle and d5 is coming, right? And why would black be worse, right? Black has maybe better development than white even. Pawn c4 is a lot more reasonable because maybe you can play knight c3. I very seriously considered pawn c4, um, but you have a, just a simpler way of controlling the d5 square that also helps you develop your pieces in an in intuitive way. OK, in the game, I played the move bishop d3, which is not a good move because my opponent played d5 and then quickly equalized, and then we had a very tense a tense um, game where we'll go over more of the mistakes that I made later. <laughs> Bishop d3 is not super accurate. So what about g3? g3, exclamation point. So g3 is very strong with the intention of meeting um, knight f6 with bishop g2. And it is very difficult for black to achieve the, uh, the pawn break d5. And we're going to have um, Catalan-esque pressure, which are something like castles, c4, knight c3. Um, white's development is a lot easier than black's because this bishop's going to be pretty passive. It's not going to be super clear where you're putting your, your, your light squared bishop. If you try to go here, maybe you'll end up getting trapped later. Who knows? Um, white has um, uh, a substantial advantage, uh, opening advantage here. OK, instead I play bishop d3 in the game, and my opponent played d5 and, uh, and more or less equalized. OK, all right, here's the next position from the game. I actually played pretty pretty well until this point, and uh, I kind of outplayed my opponent. So we have this position here where white is obviously better. Um, I have a bishop for a knight. There are pawns on both sides of the board. Uh, it is now white to play. Also, my opponent has like 30 seconds. <laughs> it is now white to play and win. And my move was pretty terrible. <laughs> Somebody says rook b8, which is a bigger mistake than what I made, because 96. All right, and then the rook hangs on b8. Somebody in a Twitch chat found the move that I played. <laughs> Bishop f6 is a very strong move. OK, bishop f6 is very logical. We are just going after the g5 pawn. We are not actually threatening the g5 pawn right now because of rook e5. We, what we are threatening is rook d2, like rook d2 wins the game. So if black like plays some pass move, which I don't even know how you pat, or like rook g8, whatever, rook d2, this kingdom pawn ending is trivially winning. Um, I knew that he wasn't going to let me do this. And uh, I figured after bishop f6, he would play the move knight e6. And I thought I would have to go back. But the thing is, this endgame is just winning. Um, I'm threatening rook b5, which in the g5 pawn is uh, very weak. And the a5 pawn is weak as well. Black's pieces are not super well coordinated. You don't have knight f4. Now I do just take g5. So uh, and g2 is protected via the second. So black is lost um, with basically no counterplay. So me not playing bishop f6. Is, uh, is, pretty, is pretty bad. It's also important to note that a move like rook e6 does not save you because black is hoping for bishop g5 followed by rook e5. But rook d2, rook d6, this end game is, again, 
uh, trivially winning. All of your pawns are attacked, and the bishop is much better than the knight in this kind of position. Um, instead, I played the move king to b5, and I will make you find my opponent's move, because it's very nice. It is uh, black to play, and um, uh, tell white that he's made a massive mistake. <laughs> By the way, this is bad alignment. Like you don't typically do this to your pieces and hope for good results. Um, I thought I was being super clever and concrete when I play this way, and of course I just missed something. So sometimes when you think you're being clever, that's when you're <laughs> that's when you're being the dumbest. Obviously, you don't want these two pieces lined up like this. King b7 is illegal and bad. Knight b7. I agree. Yeah, knight b7. So the point is, after um, knight b7, if you play the move uh, king a6, then black plays what in response here? No, king c6 loses to rook takes. And if you check, I have bishop a7 or rook a7. Yeah. Um, but we can, cut, we can cut the king. Somebody said fork. I don't even know what two pieces you can attack. <laughs> it's unlucky. After knight d6, though, the king is cut, and I don't have king a5 because then there is a fork with knight c4. You just don't have the c4 square, and uh, your king is, is kind of checkmated, right? Like rook a8 is coming, bishop a7. This is not how you place your pieces. OK, I didn't play king b5 in the game. I thought for a while and then played king c4, which is basically admitting that I made a mistake. Um, it would have been nice to have won this game, <laughs> uh, which I probably should have. Uh, by playing the move bishop f6, but instead I played king b5 and I threw um, the game away. Now, with that said, I outplayed him again and I achieved this winning position. <laughs> and it is white to play and win. What round is this? This is round number two against Don Basurin, Basurin, Basurin. Yes? Oh, sorry. Right, right, right here. Yeah. yeah, I thought about going rook d2 as well. Um, the issue, I think, with this one, again, is uh, knight b7 followed by knight d6 is a good defensive uh, construction. The, the reason why bishop f6 is so strong is because we more or less are forcing his knight to e6, which it, the, the knight on e6 is really bad. After king c4, we are overruling the knight's possible jumps. And... Um, after any other move that allows knight b7, d6, the knight is very good on d6 as the defensive piece. It's threatening uh, the c4 square in a lot of positions. It can, you know, it might go to f5. It defends f7. There are a bunch of nice things about the knight on d6 um, that is not true about the knight on e6. So even though we could play bishop f6 at some point after, like so, so if you go rook d2, I'm going check, and then you move here, I suppose, right? Now I go knight d6. And then if you go bishop f6, um, because my knight is on d6, I think this end game is not as bad as it was. Rook g8. Uh, like rook e2, like you're getting kicked out, I think. Like, like the knight is useful on the d6 square. Okay. Um, actually, maybe I'd play badly with black here. Uh, yeah, maybe I even have like knight c8, which guards e7, just because I, the knight is useful on d6. But yeah, that's a good question. Um, rook d2 is infinitely better than the move that I played, though. <laughs> so uh, maybe I would have won the game had I played the move rook d2. Um, I should have won the game anyway, because I achieved this position, where white is completely winning if you play a normal move. Um, so what would you do with white? The move for white is not difficult. There are actually many moves that win. One is the simplest, which I saw. Decided not to play. Uh, rookie seven. Well, rookie seven is a mistake uh, because you blundered the g two pawn. Right. Um, but uh, I did something similar in the game. <laughs> Bishop f six wins. Bishop f six was my first uh, intention. The thing I didn't like about Bishop f six was that he kicks me away, 
and uh, you know, okay, bishop d4 just wins. I'm going to go g4, h4, h5, and I'll win the game. So bishop f6 is very strong. Had I played this move, I probably would have won the game. Instead, I played the move pawn g4, which is terrible, and uh, black has equalized again. <laughs> black to play. What do you do with black? Also not terribly hard. As soon as I played g4, I saw what he was going to do. Rook h8. Yeah, rook h8, skewering, and the h3 pawn. The thing about these games is uh, oh, these seem like really simple mistakes, and they are. But you have to understand that this is like the sixth hour of play. <laughs> So he, my opponent has been on 30 seconds, like literally 30 seconds, for the past two hours. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a stressful thing. Um, and it's also why he like, was losing to me, right? Like in normal circumstances, he's not losing. But if you have 30 seconds against me forever, maybe you make a mistake. <laughs> and the, um, was... the increment is 30 seconds, right? So he would think forever, go down to like three seconds, make a move. And then think forever. It's a very tilting style to play against. OK, from the same game, I, uh, I'm playing with white. The position is no longer good for me. I should make a draw if I can. I played a move that lost. Um, it's white to play and draw. How would you like to draw with white? Nice. Bishop takes knight is very important. I did not do that. I play the move king e4. Bishop takes knight, c takes. You have to play well now in order to prove that you're drawing. So what move do you play? You have only one move to draw. c4. Twitch chat got there. Very nice. The point is, after king c5, we have the move rook a2. It is very important that we do not give black a pass pawn for free. So if black goes b5, right, and gets the structure, and then puts his king on c4, we will never draw this game. So we have to go c4, king c5, and then rook a2. And uh, uh, if he goes king b4, we have rook b2 check, and we can take. And the pass pawn is on the side, but also, um, uh, as opposed to c4, where it's maybe, maybe more dangerous. Um, this would have drawn the game. What I did is I played the move king e4, which blunders what move? Black can win now. I mean, he played the move and then also didn't win, but <laughs> it's a different story. So why would king e4 be bad? Knight d4 is a suggestion which is illegal and bad. Knight c4, x clam, closing off my ability to play c4. Um, now, uh, I think in the game I played the move f4. And uh, the way I, so I actually ended up drawing this game by going like king here, and after a3 going rook a2, trading this off and holding like a, a like barely holding a draw. Um, but black is uh, winning here um, by, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember what his what his uh, mistake was afterwards. But this position, this position is objectively winning because. Sorry. I, I, that was actually oh. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> Normally Brian grunts at me. This time he inadvertently grunts. They grunted at me. I thought I spoke Brian. This is a new new situation. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I think king b5 um, is is winning for black, followed by c5. I think that's uh, that's the winning the winning plan. Eventually, queen the a pawn. Uh, instead, I think he played the move rook g3, and after g5, he was he was not winning. Um, still, this is hard, but definitely I should have played the move bishop takes b6 and c4, concretely making a draw. Okay. Now, uh, this is from the third round. And shockingly, I made zero mistakes up to this point in time. And uh, this, this game I was uh, very upset about because, um, okay, in this position, you can play more or less anything and make a draw. Um, I had been making some moves. Um, it, you will notice that all the material is the same, the structure is the same. The only difference is that white has uh, this battery and my rook on f8 is passive. Uh, probably h5 is the easiest way to make a draw. Instead, I, uh, I pulled a Grandmaster Ken West, which was I made a move that defended against the threat, and then I forgot about the threat and I moved back. <laughs> and now it is black, white, white to play and win. This is against Dimitar Mardov. Round number four. I only made one mistake this game, and I lost. Yeah, I remember this game, so I'm not going to say it again. OK. <laughs> Honest. King g7 was also acceptable. Um, h5 was the easiest. Dimitar made a Grandmaster norm in this tournament. It's hard to do. <laughs> he scored seven out of nine in a field with an average rating of 2404. Okay, Twitch chat. You can't just say, I play some move, and you think it's winning, but you don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not how chess puzzles work. <laughs> <laughs> How about the h6? What? Or h5? h5? Uh, h5, I can take h5, right? So, for context, the reason why I played queen e2 was because my opponent had just played rook d7 to d4, and I thought he wanted to go this way, and I wanted to stop him from doing that so because I'm attacking his rook. Now, queen e2 is a really stupid move because I played the move queen e2 to b5 to defend against something. And uh, I followed. I followed in Ken West's footsteps. <laughs> Sorry, Ken. <laughs> um, and I just forgot about the threat. Ah, Twitch chat has has got it. It literally is. Oh, both YouTube and Twitch chat has it. Yeah, rook d8 just wins. Rook d8, you are threatening queen f8, checkmate. I have to take. You take. Again, you are threatening checkmate. Checks don't help. I captured. After queen takes d8, my king and my pawn are attacked. And this end game is actually trivially winning. Um, the, I, I knew I was lost here. I knew I had like literally no chance. Um, I played a few more moves. I eventually resigned as soon as my opponent got his pawn to b7. The thing about queen end games up like these pawns, they're not rook end games. In rook end games, you can like get behind, and it's hard for the rook to both serve as an attacker and a defender. Queens are good both offensively and def defensively. So um, my opponent more or less just kept his queen in the center, pushed his pawn, and then I, I couldn't do anything about that, and I resigned. Um, so that was, that was really sad. But I mean, on the one hand, the position's really simple. Um, so I mean, I, I shouldn't feel good about this game at all. Uh, it's very, it's this very simplified position. Everything's the same. Uh, like, how could you lose this position, right? Um, I should be able to hold this against Stockfish is maybe something uh, that somebody would say. Um, but 
I mean, I am playing uh, without this rook right now. And um, on the other hand, my opponent made zero mistakes the entire game, put constant pressure on me, like a little bit of pressure, and then, uh, and then won despite the fact that I only made one mistake. So um, all the credit to Dimitar. Um, he, played, he played a great game. OK. Now, this is my, my game the following round against Rora Ror Grayson, who is also a really strong up-and-coming player. He, uh, he also made a Grandmaster run at this tournament. So two players scored seven out of nine. It's crazy. <laughs> um, and here I, uh, um, it is black to play. What would you guys like to do with black? Black is not worse, but after my next move, I am worse. Somebody's Patrick um, Patrick says, bail. How do I bail? Oh, and then he says, how do I bail? I agree. <laughs> Ben Feingold would be really mad at me because the best move follows one of his principles. So black isn't worse because uh, despite the fact that I have these doubled pawns, um, my opponent's pawn is on f5, which means I have better dark square control. I have the two bishops in compensation for my pawn structure. Um, and yeah, the e5 square is important. If I did not have the e5 square, then I would be worse, which is why what I did was really stupid. OK, somebody uh, in, in YouTube chat uh, plays the correct move, which is king to b8, right? Ben Feingold, so when you castle, you should like move your king over, right? That, uh, that's the best thing to do. We want to go king b8, followed by rook c8 and knight e5. That is the general path that our pieces uh, should, th this is how we should arrange our pieces. In s so, yes? Oh, so in the game, I played the move bishop h6, which is a pretty bad mistake. Um, I saw my opponent's response. Um, obviously, the most aggressive move is queen c3, which is what he played. And my intention was to play the move e5, which is what happened. Uh, but e5 is a very serious tactical mistake, which brings us to uh, mistake number nine. So if we can just go back to this position mm -hmm. now, because when I look at this position, I mean before before you play all the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like two yeah. Three mistakes in a row. There. Right. Um, uh, no, instead of uh, um, king to uh, what is that? B eight. B eight. Um, I was looking at ninety five. Ninety five. 95 is uh, also a reasonable thing to do. 95 would have been better than what I did. I think the issue with 95 is your opponent can play knight d4, and then this knight to f4, and e6 becomes soft. So the reason why the computer wants me just to go king b8, rook c8, is because I am delaying his ability to play knight d4, uh, knight fd4, and then knight f4, targeting the e6 pawn. I think that's the that's the reasoning here. And earlier in the game, I was like very slightly better had I played knight e5 instead of this move bishop f8 back. So um, just a bad uh, thing in general. Now everybody's saying uh, like they're even making fun of me in, in uh, Twitch chat as you do. Um, e5, aren't you giving away the d5 square? So Jeremy Silman wrote a whole book on how the d5 square is weak. Um, that book is called Reassess Your Chess. Um, <laughs> which maybe is an oversimplification of these Sicilian positions. Yeah, the e5 square is weak, but if you give black like a move or two, then I have enough dynamic compensation that the d5 square doesn't matter. Like I played the move e5 at a time where you can't put your knight at d5, right? That was my point. Now here, my opponent played the move queen b3, which is really smart, attacking the f7 pawn. And after rook f8, um, he played knight uh, so knight c3, knight e7, we can just, just start here. I saw the move that he played in the game, which was bishop c, uh, bishop c4. Uh, but my intention was, was bad. But luckily, my intention tricked him, and I was no longer worse. So 
it, uh, it kind of worked out. I played the move queen e3 with the point being that your bishops attacked and your knights attacked. Uh, so. Um, So bishop f7 after queen f3, what is your intention? So yeah, it is white to play and win. He did not find the right move, and as a result, I survived, and I made a draw. Knight takes b5. I take back. I mean, queen is protected. The queen's protected. I mean, you're. What? You take me, I take you, you take me, I take you. Why is this bad for me? <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that, but he just said, dang it. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, then maybe I would have made an I am norm. <laughs> I'll have to get VAR to invite Nate next time. We take each other out on a date. I don't know how that helps me. Rook to d3. Well, rook d3 loses to takes, and then I have queen c5 back. Well, that sucks for, 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 for white, I agree. <laughs> so I play queen e3. OK, in the game, my opponent played knight d5, and I captured his knight. And then I played this end game, which he thought was um, like very good for white. Uh, white is better. Um, but it's not super easy to prove that white is better, and I actually equalized like maybe three moves later. So um, I will flip the board. This is white to play and win. So even though queen e3 is a mistake, right, like on paper, and um, I should be upset about it, this one, um, if I did not play queen e3, I definitely would not have drawn this game. <laughs> Because in response to my mistake, my opponent made a mistake, and then the position was better than if I had not, you know, had played the best move, which was like king b8 or whatever, king b7. White to play and win. I'll give you a hint. This queen on e3 is protected. Queen on other squares, and you can't say the same thing. Rook takes d6. Um, I can take that knight, and I can take that bishop. Probably I take your knight, and then I take your bishop. <laughs> Again with the, so the chat goes, I, I play this move, but I don't see the follow-up. <laughs> Unfortunately, these opponents are tough. And if you play a move and you don't see a follow-up, they'll play something, and then your non-follow-up is going to lose immediately. So uh, sort of that, be prepared. <laughs> yeah, sort of that knight takes b5. Knight takes b5. Um, I, again, I take you. Yeah, this, th this is not an easy tactic, I think. R R Rora Grayson is a 2400 FIDE player who made a Grandmaster norm this tournament, right? He's in good shape this tournament, and he did not see this tactic. But OK, let's go, since um, we're already at 715, um, I'm going to play the first move. You were correct, bishop f7 wins. But you have to see what happens after queen takes f3, which was the biggest. I was like, he can't play bishop f7. Play queen f3. Well, now what? Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> the account Kramnik Cheat says we love the St. Louis Chess Club. <laughs> Thank you for the support. <laughs> Great username. No, 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 no. I love my comer, and I, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Yeah, knight d5. So knight d5, queen b3. Intermezzo, I move, and then? With what? Oh, uh, with the bishop. Yeah, yeah with bishop, right? It's kind of funny, right? You, this connection is blocked, but after knight takes, the connection is unblocked. And this is the thing that Grayson missed, was he could play bishop from f7, takes b3. He was like, oh, the bishop on f7 is also hanging. And then he just like forgot to check. And uh, yeah, that would have been bad. I would have lost the game. Luckily, he didn't do that, and uh, I survived. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, this is, sorry. So um, moving on to my game against Luka Budislavlevich. Um, I have black in this position, and it was very early. Now, Luka is a d4 player, and I played the move g6. And then he transposed to e4 and decided to crush me. This position is actually not bad for black, but the move I played was bad. And I lost the game. No, it's really, it's really sad. I again only played one mistake this game, and my grandmaster opponent somehow, after I only made one mistake, beat me. It's crazy. <laughs> Horrible. They should, they, they should tell him to like, be worse at chess or something. Like, like come, I should have like at least three mistakes per game, right? <laughs> I only, I only, I only played one mistake and then he beat me. Like, what, what's up with that? <laughs> Normally, I play one mistake. If I play one mistake a game, I win against anybody. Not true for this field. In this field, I make one mistake, they kill me. <sighs> so, do you want us to tell you what you should have played or what you did play? No, no, no. I'll tell you what I. I want you to tell me what you would play. But if I tell you what I played, then you might not suggest that move. Probably would be silly of you to suggest that move. <laughs> So what would you guys like to do with black? I'd You're... be all right if I played as well as you would. <laughs> Not in this game you wouldn't. <laughs> the result would be very bad for you. So my opponent for context has just played the move pawn to h4. And if you do nothing, he will play the move pawn to h5. So the real question is, how are you going to react against that move? Your options are to play h6, h5, or do nothing. Those are your options. You want to play h6. Why do you want to play h6 and not h5? he plays h5, you can close up the Yeah, so h6, and if g5, then, uh, sorry, h5, then g5 is good. This is a, a common um, theme in these positions. Um, yeah, you are correct. h6 is the best move. I played the move h5 in the game, and we'll look at why that's bad. So h6, h5, g5, um, oh, oops. Ignore that. <laughs> h6, uh, f4 is what, um, like the most aggressive way for white to play. Uh, but after knight d7, queen c2, if I kick his knight and go c5, this position is roughly equal, and black has good counterplay. This bishop is going to be a monster. Um, there is no reason why, I, I mean, I would love to have this position with black, to be honest. I like playing positions that are equal but are like dynamically interesting because I think people play pretty badly in, uh, in those sorts of positions. And since I play badly normally, I want my opponent to also be on my level. <laughs> it's, my, uh, it's my logic. Anyway, um, I played the move h5, which is a mistake. Um, I thought his idea was to play g5 or to take. Um, I thought g5 was like bad, which is true, because like you know e6. But I thought taking was also bad because it splits his pawn structure. Um, but OK, I played rook takes. And now it is white to play. You have to play a precise sequence of moves to achieve a winning advantage. If you do not play the next, moves, uh, next few moves accurately, you will be worse. Statically, right now, if I develop my pieces, I'm, I'm positionally better. Uh, Twitch chat, you've infected Bunzo. 
Uncle Bunzo was fine. And then you started commenting. Oh, it's all over. <laughs> uh, grumble, grumble. Somebody says e5 blundering the g2 bishop. I want to play that guy. <laughs> I mean, the idea is right. The idea is right. It's just yes. Right I, I agree. e5 immediately bad. The e5 is a good idea. This time it's legal and bad as opposed to illegal. Right. You're, normally it's illegal and bad, but legal and bad. So we're a step up from normal. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are now following the rules of chess successfully. Right, then you're, the tournament director will take the move back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better to play an illegal and bad move. Unless it's blitz. Then you lose immediately. Bishop h3 is not a good move. Um, you are making this diagonal weaker. Again, if you do nothing, I am statically better. Also, so I bet you the point that this guy had is he's like, maybe he'll take my pawn blundering bishop d7. I bet you that's what that guy was thinking. <laughs> um, that or Arby's. But um, no, I would play knight f6 and I'm already better with black. So what to do? Bishop f3. Yeah, bishop, bishop f3, x clam, rook h8. <clears throat> uh, actually, the next two moves are interchangeable. So after e5, I would play the move knight c6. And then what would you do? Actually, that's not true. If you play e5 and I go knight c6, then your pawn on e5 is attacked. So if you do something, I'll take your e5 pawn. So you need to do something first. I think the computer said that they're interchangeable, but I can't justify it right now. So I'll say they're not. <laughs> you don't mind if we go a little over, right, Ben? It's fine. Yeah. No, no. Tonight? It's a brick wall. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. <It> was <laughs> One of these days, you're going to be like, yes. <laughs> Enough's enough. You have 16 problems. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> or problem number 10. D5, bishop d4. Oh, okay. Presumably, he means d5 with the idea of bishop d4. I was like, d5, bishop d4. Who, who, who's making these moves? Uh, d5 is bad because after knight d7, um, black has good dark square control. Um, potentially, I have other moves, but yeah, after bishop d4, just knight f6, and you know, black's probably better even. Maybe I start with knight f6. Okay, H, uh, Twitch chat's got it. It's h5, I take. Now, I thought his idea was to take back on h5, and I was like, what? Um, but then he played the right move, which is e5, but <laughs> just super annoying. e5, and then I played knight c6, and I thought it was very clever. I thought this was thematic, and it is, in fairness, the best move. Rook takes h5 is what he played. Rook takes h5. Now what would you do with white? c6, yeah. So yeah, if you take on h5, I just take on e5, and I'm like winning. So bishop takes c6 and queen h5, and my pieces are not very well placed. This position is objectively winning for white, and afterwards he played a great game. Um, I took on e5, trying to stop him from castling. And then I played uh, bishop to uh, b7. Or, or sorry, I played queen d7, stopping e6, obviously. Um, he played knight e2, I played bishop b7. And after knight d4, the position is very, very uncomfortable. I played e6, castles, knight e7. He played knight f5. I sacrificed my queen uh, to achieve this position, which is like very solid but losing. <laughs> uh, and he played great and converted this advantage. But that was your best try to take the Yeah, I mean, I, I, this is by far my best shot. This is like minus two, and everything else is like minus 1,000. So I figured out how not to lose the game immediately, and we played like 60 more moves. But he never once made a mistake. Um, he just converted in a very grandmasterly way. OK. Um, moving on to my next game, I played a Tatev. And um, from basically start to finish, I was completely winning like the entire game. And this is no exception. This position is also winning for white. But I took, she has no time. She has like 30 seconds right now. And um, I have many moves that win. And the move I played also wins. But it makes my winning task extremely difficult. I played um, the move rook g5, which is a bad move. It's a really bad move. 
It is now black to play and maximize your chances of survival. You might not survive, but uh, trying to maximize your chances of survival. And if I play the move g4, f5, g4 was my intention. And the reason why she didn't play f5? Nope. Maybe. You have to tell me what you do after g4, because g4 might just crush you. Like, your king's all weak and, you know, getting mated. Oh, you, well, you should just play bishop e7. But yeah, f5, g4, bishop e7, my rook is trapped. Right. <laughs> now, I'm still winning. I have to play the move h4. Um, I knew I had made a mistake after I played g5, but you know, poker face. <laughs> she has 30 seconds left, and then she played some random move. I don't even remember what. Um, what did she do? She, she played like rook e6 or something. I played rook d5, and I won like very shortly after. Um, but yeah, rook g5, f5 like almost throws away the win, and I would have had to start thinking again after f5, so that's not good. Other than this one moment where I was still objectively probably winning, um, this was the one game in the tournament where I played, I, I played well, like uh, more or less from start to finish. Um, I understood the position, and, and um, I don't think she really understood the position that well, and um, uh, she got into a lot of trouble early on. Uh, but yeah, missing missing f, uh, bishop e7. I saw f5, g4, but then missing bishop e7 is, is not good because my rook is sh very short on squares. Okay, so now we are uh, we are at game number eight, and here um, I made a mistake. I'm playing Konstantin Kavutsky, Kostya. Black has. Uh, a reasonable position, but I made a bad move. Um, and I saw my opponent's response, but I misevaluated it. What would you like to do with black? All right, well, YouTube chat has suggested what I did, which is bishop d7. So you guys are just as bad as I am. <laughs> um, the best move is rook a7 with the intention of moving the rook to e7, uh, which is a thematic idea. I played the move bishop d7, and now white has a good move. What would you guys like to do with white? Kostya tried to crush me. Uh, he played the right sequence of moves, and then he lost. Unlucky. <laughs> okay, somebody in Twitch chat has found it. Bishop d7 makes something stronger. Like, it would have been better to pass here. If I said pass. <laughs> That would have been that would have been better than what I did. <laughs> Say my prayers and wish for the best. I agree. Prayer is a large part of my strategy. It's probably why I won this game. <laughs> I cheated with God. <laughs> As you do. Wesley So style. Yeah, bishop takes g6. Now in the previous position, bishop g6 was not super effective because I have lateral defense. Um, rook a7 makes bishop g6 really silly. Um, but bishop d7 makes it stronger because in this position, okay, I played the best move, which is rook takes e3. Um, I don't have any way to defend g7 on the 7th, 
and also deal with bishop h6 immediately. So he will have three pawns and a raging attack. So I figured that um, pawns were more important than the exact pieces right now, so I played rook e3 in the game. Um, and, uh, uh, well, okay. Eventually, my opponent uh, blundered horribly and lost, but I was in, I was in big trouble, um, and I didn't fully appreciate the danger. Now, I saw bishop g6 when I played bishop d7. I figured this position was good for me. I misevaluated it. That is incorrect. After rook e3, queen f8, he played rook e1, which is good, I'm trying to go to e7. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the position is, uh, frankly, just good for whites. Okay. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Somebody says, what about king h8 and repeat? So that implies king h8, bishop h6, king g8. Don't do that. You will lose immediately. But also your opponent, um, on a serious note, will probably not repeat and go knight e4 and then knight g5. And I mean, that's going to be hard for you to deal with. OK, uh, so that was my mistake against Kostya. Um, I did not make any more mistakes against him. Uh, I played well before and after that moment. That okay. Was a great sacrifice to end <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I did eventually win that game, um, but uh, mostly because my opponent made a pretty bad one move mistake. Okay. This is my last round game against uh, uh, Belislava Krasteva. And uh, if I win this game, I become a FIDE master. <laughs> uh, in typical fashion, I have white against the lowest rated player in the field in the last round. And if I win, something cool happens. Last year in this tournament in the IM section, if I win with white, I get an IM norm. Pretty good. I drew that game. Um, I'll just spoil the fact that I did not win and I am not a FIDE master. I am 20 to 90 live right now, uh, FIDE. And uh, uh, so this game eventually was a draw. But here I, uh, I made a mistake. I played the move knight c1, and black is better. First, what would you like to do with white to achieve an advantage? And then we'll look at what black should do um, after knight c1. Yeah, so somebody in YouTube has got it. Well, the reason why they want to play it is incorrect, but they got the first move right. I want to pressure e6. e6? How? So um, <laughs> I'd like to get the bishop on the. Um, like this? On the h3 uh, diagonal, or get the knight onto f4. Well. Okay, that square is controlled, right? Like black's not going to give up control of that square. If you go h4, and um, I, I'm not obligated to take. So if bishop h3 is actually a big deal, I'll play g4 and stop you. And that's probably positionally advantageous for me. And secondly, after after I take, if you play bishop h3, there are worse exchanges in this world to lose, right? <laughs> like if she just lets you take on f5, are you happy losing your light square bishop around your king? Probably not. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the best move here um, is just to play on the queen side. We just go pawn a4, trying to make the b5 uh, pawn weak, just play against black structure, um, and later try to invade maybe rook a1, a8 later, if we're lucky. Um, I played the move knight c1, which is very greedy. I want to put my knight on d3, and I want to like maximize the quality of my pieces. But um, this disconnection of my pieces has allowed my opponent to achieve dynamic counterplay. So what would you do with black? Bishop b7 hangs the e6 pawn. Edward really wants to play you. He would really wanted to take that pawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is all Edwards. I put the bug in your head. <laughs> what? <laughs> the bug inside. All right. So YouTube chat has got it. 
the move is d5, exclamation point. Now, I thought this move was bad because of the move knight c5. But she has a very nice response to knight c5. Knight d2 was not my intention. Obviously, d5 is good if I have to go knight d2 because you're shooing my pieces backwards. Eventually, I might achieve e5. Knight c5 allows um, a ta uh, like a positional tactic. You don't win anything, but you get to do something that you otherwise would not normally be able to do. Yeah, so YouTube has got it. I'll give you guys like 30 seconds to find it. Yeah? No. No? No? Okay. The move is knight e5. So this knight is no good, right? Overruled, overruled, in theory overruled, but after knight e5, I can't take because the structure is horrible. F2 is weak. You're probably going to lose this guy. Um, and black is just winning here. And if you let me play knight c4, then my, my knight has improved drastically. This position is much better for black than it used to be. OK, uh, she didn't find that. I think her assumption was like me, d5, knight, c5 is good. And she didn't see knight e5. And uh, so we will continue to the next mistake. <laughs> so in this position, I play the move queen b4, uh, which is bad, <laughs> allowing the same sort of idea. Uh, black should play d5, knight c5, and then here, Black has a very strong sequence that achieves a, a large advantage. What would you guys like to do with black? Well, I'd like to play e5. Yep, e5. And if a4, like just attacking your queen side, what is your response? What was the point of e5? The next move. People are saying knight d7, hanging the d5 pawn. It's, op it's optimistic. I'll take it, and then I'll take you. And then I'll laugh at you in French. I don't speak French, but I'll learn. <laughs> YouTube uh, has figured it out. Just because we're, we're already over time, I'll, I'll say the move. The move is pawn to e4, exclam. The intention of going pawn e3 and destroying the king side. Queen g3 and bishop h3 coming, gaining a bunch of space, also stopping the knights from coming to the d3 square. Um, queen b4 wasn't a tactical mistake. It was a positional mistake that leads to a winning advantage uh, for black. So that would have been bad. Luckily, my opponent didn't find d5. Again, probably we both assumed knight c5, knight d3 was, was good for me. Okay, I was thinking knight d3 here. But again, pawn uh, e4 followed by e3 is going to be devastating to my position. Okay, so um, in this position, I have white, uh, uh, same game. And I'm finally better. Yes. <laughs> and then I throw away my advantage immediately. So I spent all of this time out playing her. And then uh, I got scared of something. What should you do with white? I didn't trust my first instinct. It's so tempting to play bishop takes uh, g. Well, it, oh, you're, you're saying from black's perspective, right? From black's perspective. Well, it's, it's white's. That's actually what I was scared of. I, so I was like uh, shell shocked from my game with Kostya <laughs> that I kept looking at these sacrifices. But this sacrifice doesn't do anything. So it's white to play. Um, the, the best move is rook to e2 just to double the rooks. I play the move queen e2 because I was terrified of the idea of bishop g3, and I wanted to just shoo her pieces away with queen e3. OK, black loses here. Um, but I should just go rook e2, and after bishop g3, uh, white to play and win. And it's these sort of simple moves that you can overlook. Uh, that move probably wins. Um, I go here. 
Now what? What? All right, I move the other rook, and then what are you doing to me? Oh, you go here, and then I take you. I understand. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so you trade, but what's the main idea? You can still play the defensive idea here. I was scared that my h3 was, a pawn was hanging. Um, it's better not to do this, by the way. You should just play it here. White has a very simple defensive move, after which um, I am winning. But I didn't see it. Since I didn't see it, I didn't play this line. What about knight to f2? Knight to f2, exclam. Just defending the h3 pawn. Um, potentially, we can sacrifice a pawn with knight g4 to weaken the light squares. It is more important that we keep our light squared bishop as a defender than it is to keep the h3 pawn. Um, especially because these squares are going to become really weak. This position is completely winning for white. Um, had I seen knight f2, then I would have played rookie 2. Um, and even though it seems like, oh, this is like a positional thing, uh, you know, computer doesn't give that much of an eval difference, I consider this to be a pretty serious mistake because positionally, I knew that rookie 2 was the best move. I just couldn't calculate the tactical ramifications after bishop g3, which the computer says is nonsense, but I couldn't refute it over the board. I didn't see knight f2 for some reason. Um, had I seen knight f2, then I would have played rookie 2, and probably I would have put more pressure on her. Okay, and see, it's illegal, maybe. <laughs> yeah, like residual image. So that pawn is on f2 right now, so I didn't see it in the future. Uh, still, missing knight f2 is not good. And this was the last mistake I played at the tournament, um, if, it will, if it will load <laughs> one day. Leech has really doesn't want me to show this, show this position. Offline, no. What's happening, Ben? Okay. I don't know. All right. Uh, All right. We're, 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 we're back. Okay. okay. So in this position, I played the move 96. Uh, hold on. So the, oh. The, the screen cap froze up here. Hold on. Uh, can you switch back and forth? Okay. Here? Here. Uh, we're, yeah. We're, hold on. Let me, let me have to reconnect something. I, I don't know what just happened. Um, Yikes. Mm. I apologize, Twitch chat. Notice I'm not apologizing to YouTube chat. No. Forget about those guys. <laughs> no. uh, okay, there we go. Now we're back. Okay, all right. So in this position, I played the move 96, after which uh, the game quickly became a draw. Takes, takes. She captured my pawn on h2. I captured her pawn on h6. Then I played rook c6, attacking her knight. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the game wasn't terribly interesting anymore. After, um, I don't remember what she played. It doesn't really matter. I capture the, the knight on c4, and the game will be a draw. In this position, I have excellent winning chances. After the move knight to f3, which I saw, um, now the tactical point is if rook f3, bishop f3, rook f3, rook e8, which is the best variation, I win the bishop on c8, and I am up in exchange in this end game. Technically speaking, the computer only gives like a plus one advantage, um, but I think that the winning chances here are, are, pretty, are pretty good. Um, the king is weak. There is a lot of open space where potentially she can get checkmated. Um, the, thing, the reason why I didn't play knight f3 in the game was because of rook a2, which is, really, <laughs> which is not a good defense because now white does win the game. It is white to play and win, and white has um, many wins but one very clean one. Bishop takes knight. Uh, bishop takes knight probably also wins. What, after bishop takes knight, b takes, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, now what you should do is just knight e5. And had I realized this, oh, knight to, wow. the rook on a2 is hanging. <laughs> just very simple. Again, it's a nine round tournament at the end. And also we had been playing now for several hours. Um, so, you know, both of us are tired. Uh, but yeah, knight e5, missing the bishop can capture the rook on a2 is, is a bad miss. Um, this was not the only way I could have tried to achieve an advantage. The other way was g4, which, is, which potentially is an even stronger move practically. Because after rook takes a2, bishop takes c4, and then rook f1, um, it is really hard for black to defend this endgame because the bishop on c8 is kind of trapped. 
So if you take on f1, for instance, king takes f1, I'm threatening rook d8, uh, sorry, rook e8, which just wins a full piece. And you don't have any defense to that because bishop b7 isn't allowed and all of these squares are controlled. So that would have been, um, uh, like here, black has to find like rook d8, I think, or I don't even remember what, uh, maybe it's already like, over. Rook, take, oh, rook takes a2 is a mistake. Uh, because of bishop takes c4 and rook f1, and now it's and now it's over. So this would have been a really good practical try as well, g4. Um, I didn't fully appreciate how bad her bishop on c8 was. Um, if I played this move, maybe I would, have be, I would be a fide master right now. Instead, I'm 10 points away. Um, those were all of my mistakes from uh, the last tournament. Uh, bishop 96, taking a position where I have very good pressing chances and my opponent is in time pressure, and then basically concretely forcing a draw is not a good idea. <laughs> um, but that's how the tournament ended. Overall, a pretty good result. Uh, gained 21 FIDE points. Uh, my US is uh, now close to 2370. So we are approaching new titles. Um, but even though it was a good result, I did play a number of mistakes. And that's the point. When you are trying to get better at chess, you don't need to look at your wins. You don't need to look at how you know, well you play at your best. You need to try to minimize the number of mistakes that you make, which is why I am leading by example, showing you all the mistakes I played for the last tournament. Um, do any of you have any questions? No? OK. Well, thank you for showing up to my class um, for the road to 2000. Thank you.